impressive to me that 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 that, 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 that the way that the departments and including even at the studies departments are set up is that they're very neatly bounded, just like the old disciplines that we're trying to overcome. The, the, the new discipline, the new areas of study become disciplines in their own right with the same kind of boundedness, the same kind of circumscription that prevent you from really flying intellectually and understanding the world as a relationship of people, especially impressed people in the world. In general, my sense is that blackness is very much a limited um, option in this, in this country. And that's one of the reasons why when the census came up, I felt it was really important for us to do something that would address this question of Latinos and women and how they were going to cope with the, uh, the census form. Most people look at the census form and they see African American, Negro, or black, and black, and they saw them as synonymous terms. So that the only blacks are African Americans, only Negroes are African Americans. And somehow Latinos are exempt from those classifications. Now, the Latin American and Caribbean has over 150 acknowledged people of African descent. There are about, what, 43, 45 million African Americans slash black because that includes Africans and certain West Indians in the census count. It does not include black Cubans, black Puerto Ricans, black anything except those groups that have been understood to be black historically. And so in the United States, if we take people and, and Latinos and we ask them check black as well, the number of blacks, the, the population of black people in the United States will increase exponentially. In doing this work, it allows us to move beyond, I'm a historian, the United States Geographic artificial borders. It allows us to push and say, this is a hemispheric analysis, right? This is a larger analysis geographically. And it's also very exciting that when we allow ourselves to think not only beyond categories of Latina, Latino, African American departments, but when we allow ourselves to even think broader, geographically, hemispherically, we have to think differently. And that's the power of this work. Kim Simmons book, which actually is a great example of Afro-Latina studies. It's a great example of intersectional work within Afro-Latina studies in that her work begins in the side of identity and race, racial identifications and identity in the Dominican Republic and moves back and forth between the spaces of the United States and talks about how some of these issues, um, when we're looking within a particular lens, we can think, oh, this is an issue of our community. Because there's often this time, I think you brought up something about the artificiality of departments and how they operate as systems. Well, they do operate as certain systems, but it's really up to us as professors and colleagues to kind of move beyond that artificiality and to kind of create these new spaces where Miriam and Juan are allowing us to kind of say, what about think thinking about it this way? I think that's where Latina, Latino studies, and renaming the department is what it is allowing us to do. It's allowing us to kind of rename the space where we do our intellectual and activist work. Um, looking at this identity of Afro-Latina on the census, which as an anthropology students can tell you, comes from this OMB Directive 15, and those distinct categories, those boxes, and there's been a lot of um, active, academic and activist work, or academic act and activist work, um, to sort of correct this uh, colonial residue that continues. Um, and that work has also been this, this work to, I guess, insert intersectionality um, into this idea of how we're discussing race, be it from the standpoint of the Department of Latino, Latino Studies, or Africana Studies, is very much within this tradition of the College of Ethnic Studies. Um. And, and what we're trying to do with the Afro-Latino Forum, Afro-Latino Forum, is bring that out among Latinos, that as much as we'd like to talk about our mestizaje, mestizaje, racial mixture, has been a reality for people of African descent 
everywhere and at all times. In fact, racial mixture is a global phenomenon. It's not something unique to any one group of people. And that by being that, that by speaking Spanish, it does not exempt you from the reality of racism, of oppression, or any of the things that are attributable to skin, to your features, or any of those other things that have basically labeled us as inferior in the eyes of the larger world.